All right, lads. So this is, um, I guess, video number two. Uh, in this video, we'll be modding this uh, Skywolf flashlight, and uh, we'll see what kind of performance we can get out of it. Um, just a few simple mods. I'm going to do everything by hand. Uh, I do have the tools to do it by a machine, but I want to show you guys that it can be done by hand. Uh, it'll be a pretty simple mod, not too time consuming, I hope. First of all, I want to do is, <clears throat> I want to put an O-ring here, because there's no O-ring, just to help keep our water. Um, then, I'll pretty much, all I'm going to do is change the emitter. So, right now, we've got a no-name e emitter, it's not a Cree or anything. Um, I'll keep the, the driver the same. I may put a spring on it, or I may not, that depends. Um, not quite sure yet, uh, but I'll definitely be changing the wires on it. So we can pretty much start. I'm outside, I'm not inside, so I don't have all my tools with me. I've only got some. Um, I don't know how this is going to work with the camera so close. I'm definitely going to hit the camera at least once and block out the light. Uh, this thing fits so tight, it's really, really hard to get off. You can see me with a screwdriver right now, I'm struggling. You kind of got to like pry it from side to side uh, without hitting the emitter. There we go. It's almost off. All right, so that covers off. Uh, luckily for us, uh, I forgot my drill in the house, didn't I? Um, we don't really need to drill too many holes. Um, so this plastic bit here, it pretty much sits here. And it acts as a retaining ring in a sense. It's only pressure fit, but as you can see, it was on really, really tight. So that's basically that's all you really need um, to hold down the LED and the board that we put in there, uh, and the uh, piece of um, aluminium heat sink that we put put in there. We'll pop off the driver too while we're here. Um. You can pretty much take everything out, I guess. Uh, I had to bring my soldering iron outside from inside. I definitely got to move this uh, light here, and I definitely got to move the um, camera so I don't burn it because that's my phone. All right, so that emitter is now off. You don't even really have to desolder it, to be honest. Um, yeah, so these are the, the two um, driver wires. Um, I'm going to replace them with, I'm pretty sure these are 22 gauge. You can see substantially thicker. Although you guys probably can't make that out. There you can see there is a big difference in thickness there. Focus. Uh, well, when I cut it down, you'll see. Let me just desolder these first. See if I need anything else from inside. To sort itself back on. It's fine, that's gone. They weren't actually very frugal on the actual solder that they used because um, that's quite a lot of solder there. Alright, so um, what we have here is a pre cut kind of down to size uh, piece of aluminium. So basically, what we want to do is make it round to fit inside. Uh, the pill. So you can see what I mean. So right now the only surface area that is removing heat from the LED is this little lip here. Uh, let me get my uh, pointing receptacles out. So this little lip here is the only part that's taking away heat from the LED. Um, which in its current state it, it isn't super bright so that's actually fine. Like I would leave it like that if you weren't going to put a new emitter in, in here. But seeing as if you're going to put a new emitter anyway you may as well kind of like just get a small piece of alloy like so and then shape it. Um, you can use any, any anything you want to shape it as in the sense, you know, just cut it. We should be able to just snap these corners off with a uh, set of long nose pliers or any sort of pliers. So we should be able to bend it and then it should just snap, which will kind of save us a little bit of time. Uh, you can use anything. You don't have to use alloy. You can use copper. I'm just using alloy because it's a little bit cheaper than using copper. 
Uh, mind you, if you do use copper, it might be easier because they will already come pre-cut sometimes. You can get copper shims uh, in two by two mil, uh, 20 by 20 mils. It's a pretty common size to find them. Yeah, it isn't really working too well with the camera so close to me. All right, I'll try and leave the camera here and see how it goes. Alloy is a fairly soft metal, which makes it pretty easy to work with. Uh, it's also pretty good at um, dispersing heat. So the best alloy actually does better than brass at dispersing heat. From everything I could find, I was very surprised to see this. So I don't really understand why um, companies still use brass in their flashlights. Um, you don't really see brass on like computers. You'll see copper or aluminium, you never see brass. So I'm not sure like why you would put um, brass in the flashlight. If it's just for the look, then I understand. But if it's for like um, actually being used and for removing heat, if alloy is going to do a better job, then why not just use a massive alloy heatsink instead of using a brass heatsink? So I guess I should say gram, gram, gram to gram, um, the best alloy is better at removing heat than brass. All right, we've gotten this a little bit smaller. Um, still needs a lot of work actually. So um, before we start sanding it, we'll bring out uh, my little hobby files. Alright lads, so I kind of got over it and just used the bench sander. Um, it was going to take a while, so yeah. Um, before I would have just done it 110% by hand, but uh, seeing I got the bench sander, might as well use it. So it's pretty um, it's round, just that little point there, I might just file down by hand. Take that out. I'd rather leave it pretty tight fitting, so it's kind of like press fitted in place, but everyone's different. It's not really a necessity. Oop. Kind of get out all these little points. I think we can pretty much push that in now. All right, now the heat sink, I'm just gonna roughen up the surface, but make it smooth. So this is like 320 grit. I just wanna sand it down. Although it's already smooth, you kind of want it, um, it's got a little coating on it and you wanna get that coating off. You can remove that coating just by using alcohol or uh, mineral turps or something. But it is also good just to sand it down. Alright, so I just tapped that into place. Um, you can see it's down in place now really, really good. Uh, it fits in really well. It's not going to come out even if you just tap it or shake it like so. Um, we are going to have to add holes for the wires to come through, so I will need to bring a drill out for that. Alright guys, so I'm really sorry about the shaky footage, but um, I can't seem to get filming right and working like this at the same time. So I'm just going to put the camera on the side here and um, work. And if it works, I'll upload it. If it doesn't, I won't pretty much.
All right, lads, so don't mind the mess, but this is how it looks when you fix up lights. All right, so the emitter that I'm putting in is a Cree XML2. Uh, looks to be a T6. I've already got a little bit of heatsink paste on there. Wow. Don't do that at home. So that emitter just went flying then. Uh, it's on a copper board, actually. I can't remember where I got it from, but that's the one I'm going to use. It's not in the best shape, but it's not the worst. Um, I remember I pulled a board out of a broken light and I reflew, flew and is that the right word? I reflowed an emitter on there. So um, yeah, that's the stock board. That's the um, stock board there. That's the Cree XML that we're going to be using. So it is on copper, as you can see. Um, doesn't have to be on copper, but that's just the one board that I've actually got that I can use. Um, so now we've got to just drill two holes. For the positive and negatives to get through. There's one hole there. That's another hole there. Uh, these wires are pretty thick, so we've got to make sure that they'll even fit in. All right, lads, so we're pretty much finished up here. Um, we'll put it back together now. Oh, the driver just came back out, but that can be fixed after. Not a major problem. All right, lads, now it's all back together. Um, trying to solder the driver in is a pain in the ass because you've got to solder onto aluminium. But yeah, um, if it's got to be done, it's got to be done. It doesn't really have to be done. You can still press fit it in there. It depends what you want. So the light does work. So that's low mode. Then you got blinky, then you got high mode. So you can see it is a lot brighter now. Um, I'm not sure uh, about heat dissipation, how much better it is, but it will be at least a little bit better. Um, also, the stock driver that I'm still using, the one that came with the light, isn't going to be able to output that much power, so it's not going to be too much of a concern with only the one mil board. I'm more concerned that the um, MC PCB, that the copper board is sitting um, flush against the piece of alloy which when I checked it was, but uh, you can't be too sure. So we'll take it outside now and see how it does. All right, lads, so now the light's done. Um, it still suffers from PWM, unfortunately. I uh, won't be able to change that. Uh, this is on low mode with the um, XML2 26 with the stock driver. But um, yeah, it zoomed the whole way out. So we'll zoom it in. So you can see it is much, much brighter than uh than before even on low mode it outputs a lot more light uh, you would be expecting that from using a proper cree, cree emitter uh it does seem to be dimming uh, maybe it's just me i'm not sure um so the heat sinking probably isn't the best um i just had to make sure like that it was flat but it is a little bit better than what it was the light isn't even getting warm so i guess the driver in it isn't exactly the best um now we'll go up modes so that's high mode now with the um, XML2. You can see it puts out a pretty decent amount of light. Lights up my backyard, pretty good. Um, the tint is really, really blue, but we'll kind of zoom in a little bit. So you can see zoomed in, it puts out a lot of light. Uh, we'll zoom in the whole way and we'll go to 100 meters. It actually makes it there. Not sure how well you guys can see that, but I can see it at 100 meters pretty easy, actually. It's pretty cool from such a small light to make it so far. And there we are against the backboard, against the fence. I think the um, the emitter is still getting pretty warm. I just got to make sure that it's fully flat.
Oh, the light's heating up slowly, slowly. Um, I reckon we should go bring out an S2 Plus and see how it does. Alright lads, now we've got the uh, stock S2 Plus on in all its nice and beautiful tint. Look at that tint. Glorious, isn't it? Um, I could have easily put this LED into the um, Zoomy, but I figured because it's on a noctogen board, like proper copper MCPCV, uh, it's better off staying inside this. Driven a little bit harder, even though it's only at 3 amps still. Um, yeah, I'll just keep it inside the S2 Plus. But obviously, you know, if you guys were to buy that two dollar light, you could put in any 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 emitter that you wanted. All right, now to the left is the uh, Skywolf Eye on its highest mode. So left Skywolf, uh, right S2 Plus. So you can see uh, S2 Plus does still appear to be a little bit brighter, but not by too much actually. If we go very close side by side, it's a bit hard to tell because they are kind of different shapes. So I can't really emulate the shape on the Skywolf that the S2 Plus is. But you can see they're not too bad. And for the stock driver, it's it, it, it's okay. The the stock driver in the Skywolf Eye. It does have a little bit of PWM on low, low mode, as you can see right now. But it's not too bad it's not the world's worst driver uh, you could easily put a Nange or uh, whatever other driver you want into the Skywolf and make it a little bit better but then that's also going to be spending a little bit more money alright guys that's pretty much the whole video done uh, what do I say so overall you're spending about maybe five US dollars total and you're getting probably yeah, not a thousand lumens but let's just say five six hundred somewhere around about there um it's not too too bad you know like where else are you going to spend like five US dollars and get a proper amount of lumens like that um you do lose a few lumens because of the uh zoomy the zoomy style light but it's not too bad overall uh it's got three modes it's not the best driver in there so if you could afford to put a better driver in there um do it but to to me it's still an okay light it works like that um you know and as for making the heat sink even if you didn't make the heat sink i don't think it's going to make too much of a difference having it in there but i done it because that's the proper way to do it and i'd rather build a light the proper way if you wanted to dodge it up it'll work probably just as good to be honest um if you didn't use that heat sink because that lip on the um pill is pretty big any anyway even without um making it bigger so i reckon that that should be able to extract enough heat to the light anyway it's not going to make that much of a difference it's just going to mean that the led is going to dim down uh faster than it would if it had better heat sinking uh yeah so this video was a right pain in the ass to make because it's pretty hard to work at the same time and to know what you're recording so i fast forward most of it even though i did have talking on and i just left little boxes with annotation style styles in it uh to tell you guys what i'm doing uh that's probably a better way um yeah so i'll have a review coming up soon so stay tuned and as always i uh, hope you like the video i actually like making these videos that they are pretty fun i like working on lights i like working on knives anything like that uh so as always like and subscribe and thanks for watching guys